What it do, Kung Fu? You tuned into the Jose Morales podcast. I'm your host, Jose Morales. We're back in the ring, but this time I'm not alone. I got a special guest with me. She is an Andy. Hi, and, everyone. And um, she's actually my niece. Uh, her dad is my cousin. I know Mexican family trees are confusing. I know. <laughs> Uh, but she, we're actually related, similar to how I'm related to Alex and Kelly. Her her dad is my cousin. Her grandpa is my mom's brother. And I'm so excited to have you here. First, I haven't seen you in forever. To Yay. see you and see your family, it makes me very happy. So thank you for making the drive here. By the way, she drove four hours to be here. Yes, thank so, you for having us. Thank it's you. an honor. <laughs> thank you for being here. So tell me about yourself. So I... Um, she, she, you're doing Mona, right? Yes. And yes. then you're crazy with your social media. It's amazing <laughs> what you do. Thank like you. Like you make it look so good. I'm like, damn, she got skill. <laughs> and then you're a makeup artist yes. also. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself. Like where were you raised? Tell me about yourself. Talk, talk to me. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, hi everyone. My name is Erin Dira. It's easier, I think, to say it in Spanish, Erin Dira, than it is Erendira. in English. It's always funny. People are like, what's your name? Like, who named you that? Like, I, it is. I'm like, hold on. Hey, before I go further in the name, how do you say the last name? I didn't say the last name because it's her husband's last name. I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to mess it up. What's the proper way to say the last name? Because I think I said it wrong. So in Spanish, it's Aranzazu. In English, it's Aranzazu. And I always tell him, I'm like, de por si, I have a crazy first name, and I marry you, and you gave me this crazy last name. Like, it's, I'm, I'm sure I'm the only person on this planet with my name. Like, yeah. my first and last name. That but is, it's funny. I didn't, I didn't even say it because I'm like, I, I don't know if I'm going to say it wrong, and I don't want to mess it up. And then he's here. He's like, he's saying my name wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, it's, it's funny when people are like, oh, your name is so crazy. And yeah, it's definitely a unique name. Um, unique. But I love to have it. I know growing up, I hated my name. I'm like, mom, why did you name it this? It's so hard to write out. People can't say it. But honestly, I love it. It's very unique. When when people, what's a common way to they mess up your name? What's the first one they they usually say? Uh, well, they say I mean, for, they usually like before they even try, they're like, I apologize if I say your name wrong, or they'll look at me like, uh, Aaron, and that's all they'll say. They just go to Aaron, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's but hella funny. it is. And when I go to Starbucks, like I don't even bother. I just tell them Aaron. Just Aaron's my name, or I'll say like Maria or something to make it easier for them. Hey, that's good. I do. <laughs> my my name is not hard, but I just hate my name, and I just say it. every time I go out or something, I, my name's Antonio. Antonio. <laughs> I never use Jose. Oh my gosh, I'm that's Antonio. So funny. Antonio. That so, is so funny. tell us about yourself. Where were you? Where were you born? Where were you raised? School? Everything. So, Whatever you want to share. Tell yeah. us. So um, it's actually crazy because a lot of people, when I tell them like my like where I was from and stuff, they're like, no way, like. You don't even look like you speak Spanish. You don't even look like you're um, from Mexico. But yeah, I was actually born in Mexico. I was born in Michoacan. Um, no hospital, no clinic, nothing. I was born in a kitchen with, you know, midwives. You know how it was back in the day. Um, so yeah, that's it. And when I tell people, they're like, wow, like I thought you were from here. I thought you like didn't even speak Spanish. I'm like, no, I'm actually from there. So, um, you know, our my story is like your typical uh, Mexican family story. Like my parents immigrated to the U.S. in the year 2000. Um, and we came here to Sacramento. Like, this is where we grew up. This is my hometown. I call, I say my hometown, even though I was born over there. Um, I was five at the moment, and my sister was four. So we were little. We, you know, came over here um, with our parents and stuff. So uh, I remember when I, I actually do remember, like, when I crossed and everything, when we crossed the border. And then getting here, I remember getting here, and then my parents were like, I think it was like around May when we got here. And then that following summer, I had to start school. So I was like, okay, like, you know, you start kinder. And I'm like, well, I don't know no English. Like I had like nothing, nothing, not even a word in English, just Spanish. And then I remember in kindergarten, I had this little girl. She was like, hey, don't worry. Like I'll teach you English. And I, I'd never forget her. Like I always remember that day, my first day in school, like where I knew not one word in English. And that girl was like, oh, you know, I'll help you. Don't worry. And she yeah. teach me, which was like, I'm saying like, I'll never forget that. But you know, just growing up, typical Mexican family, like I said, like my parents um, would always work. You know, my dad always worked at restaurants. My dad and my mom would always work at restaurants. My dad worked like crazy. He did. He worked so many jobs at the same time. Um, he was very hardworking. Yeah, he was a very hardworking man. And um, that was kind of just like our childhood, you know, like just growing up, you know, most of the time my parents were gone. So it would just be, I'm the oldest, by the way, I'm the oldest. I have three other siblings, my two sisters and my brother. Um, so I'm the oldest. And um, of course, you know how I'm the oldest in the Mexican household is kind of like the second mom. So mm -hmm. my parents would always be at work. So I'd be the one in charge of watching the kids. Um, I know when my little sister was born, um, I was 10 at that time. And I would watch her as a newborn. Like my mom would like, hey, I have to go to work. And I, you know, I'm gonna leave her sister with you. And I, oh, she was a newborn. And I would have to watch her. So how was that? It was, 
I mean, a lot of people tell me like, you know, you're, you, you matured like, like for your age. And I feel like it's because of that, you know, because I had to like, like put my, put my big girl pants on yeah. when I was little, you know, watch my siblings and take care of them. And even now, like she's going to turn 18 ne- this year. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm going to cry because she feels like, I feel like she's my daughter. Cause yeah. you know, she, I, I, um, raised her. Yeah. You raised her, you yeah. change her diapers, I ra- you yes, her, everything. everything. <laughs> and then even now, like I take her out, like wherever she wants to go, like give me a ride or we go out together. Like she's like my second child. So, um, you know, as the oldest, like it's, it's you your siblings are like your children and for my husband it's completely different because he was um he was actually the youngest so he's the youngest of his family and I'm the oldest and it's crazy sometimes how we see things differently it is he's like oh like you know you do so much for your sister I'm like you don't understand like they're my kids they're like my kids you know but he you know he's the youngest so he has how many siblings does he points. have he has three three as well so one brother and two sisters and he's the youngest uh. yeah so it's fi- kind of funny to see that like it's, different point of views it's true because i i was reading an article where it talked about depending on if you're the middle child or you're the youngest you're the oldest where you're at you have tendencies that you wouldn't have if you were the oldest or the youngest yeah so it is i believe it i my kids is trip like my oldest is way different than my youngest uh-huh. it's weird <laughs> yeah, i mean yeah. just how it is yeah, no, it's definitely different viewpoints. And then, yeah. so you were here in SAC, and then you went to Lincoln. Oh, you lived in Lincoln too? Yeah, yeah. Did so, you go to Lincoln High? Yeah, I did. You did, right? Yeah, yeah. So we we lived in SAC for the longest. I mean, we were always moving because my dad's jobs. Mm-hmm. Like, we would always be moving. I remember for every different grade in school, I would go to a different school. Yeah. Like, it was a struggle, but um, uh, we actually moved to Lincoln. I don't remember exactly when. But we lived in Lincoln probably like five five years before we moved to the Central Valley. So we did move to Lincoln, um, and I did go to Lincoln High. I went to school there. Um, I know when the whole thing with my dad happened. So in 2010, my dad actually my dad actually died um, homicide. So we moved to the Central Valley just because that's where my mom's family is at. So all my aunts, my grandma, everybody was there. So we mm-hmm. moved, and I remember my mom like once that happened, she like like literally within a month she was like we're dropping everything we're leaving everything we're just taking our clothes and we're moving like she just wanted to be out of here i mean i understand yeah that makes sense and um i wouldn't want to be here either, yeah because it reminds you of everything <laughs> yeah it reminds yeah. you so we you know i was a sophomore in high school and i just you know you were a sophomore yeah i was a sophomore when okay. i moved yeah i was a sophomore so you finished high school over there yeah i had to finish high school over there so okay yeah so that was like that whole time in our lives was like so crazy, so hectic. And, you know, we remember every single detail. We remember how it happened. Um, but that know. had to be a big. Tell me about that. How was it when you found out? So, so relive that day for me. You were, oh where, where were you? Where were so you? I was in school. So I was in school. And actually that weekend, my mom was in the Central Valley. So she wasn't even in town. She went to the Central Valley to visit my grandma, you know, be with her family. So her and my sister, um, they went down over there, and I stayed with my younger sister and my brother. So I stayed at our house with them, and um, I know they. It was on a Sunday, so that Sunday they left in the morning, and then um, I was home with with my siblings. And then it was came nighttime, and then um, you know my dad. I mean, I know he was always either at work or he was with his friends. So um, I, that nighttime he came home. So actually uh, he came home. He's like, here his money for pizza. I'm gonna go out. So, um, okay, so I order pizza for the kids, whatever. And that night, so, you know, he usually comes home. Like, most of the time, he would always be home, always come home. If he was drinking with his friends, he would always come home. So I would, like, get up and, like, check if he was home. He wasn't home. I wouldn't see him. Like, I would get up at night. It, you just have that feeling that, was, that something, something, was, something wrong. was wrong. You just have that feeling. So, and so actually, you had that feeling? Yeah, I had that feeling. So, actually, that same night, around 9 o'clock is when it actually happened. And, actually, he got... This happened um, like a street down, maybe a street over in the apartment club complex that was over. So it was really close by. So when I heard this, I heard the sirens. So I heard the sirens because oh, you heard the sirens. Yes, because in Lincoln, I mean Lincoln, small. Lincoln is small. Like no, nothing has ever happened ten years prior to that. So when you hear sirens, it's like what's happening? You know what's happening? So I actually heard the sirens, and I remember telling myself like, what the heck happened? What the heck happened? Like that's so weird. So I we went to sleep, whatever, and like and um. That same night, I'm telling you, like, I woke up every single minute, like, to freaking check if he was home and he wasn't home. So you just have that feeling that something is wrong. So in the morning, he didn't come home. So, you know, I got my siblings ready for school. I got ready for school. And I was just texting, like, my uncle, like, hey, is my dad with you? I know his work called me. He's like, hey, he didn't show up for work this morning. Like, something was just off. So I went to school that day. I went to school completely not knowing anything. And people were like, 
hey, did you guys hear about that guy who got murdered? Did you guys hear about the man that got murdered in the apartments? People were just talking about it, like, left and right. And I had no idea. Like They I, were talking about it at yes, school? They were talking about it at school. They're like, hey, like, you know, did, someone got murdered last night. Did you guys hear about it? It was in the apartments. And me, I had no idea. That's a trip. I had no idea that it was my freaking dad. Like, who, who, who you wouldn't think, right? Yeah. So we actually, they actually didn't tell us until we got home from school. So after school, like, that's where my uncle's wife, Mithilias, he, he told us, she told us what everything that had happened. Um, so they didn't really tell us, like, I was, what, 15 at that time? I was 15. My siblings were even younger. My brother was 10. My other sister was 14. And my other sister was 5. So she was small. So, like, they didn't really tell us the details. They were just like, hey, your dad got an accident. That's all they told us. So we didn't, like, know anything that was going on. But we seen, like, everybody crying and stuff like that. So we kind of, like, figure, figured it out on our own. Yeah. So my mom had to come down from the drive. So she kind of come down from the Central Valley driving up there knowing what had happened. So, yeah, it, it was crazy. And like I said, we remember that day like like it was yesterday. And it's, life's a trip, you know. Like one day they're here, the next day they're not. Mm. And you never expect it. Like my dad wasn't in gangs. He wasn't in problems and stuff like that. And it's just over alcohol, you know. Mm, he was very so, hardworking. Yeah. So I know that was like a big thing in Lincoln because everybody knew him because he worked at Awful Annie's. Um, so he worked there for years. Everybody, the whole community knew who he was. I know, remember there would be people who would go eat and they're like, I want him to cook my food. Like, you know, I want him to make our food. So he he was well known, you know, well known in the community. And I remember just receiving so much help from the community. Like my sister's school send us money, like so many cards, so many, so, so, so much help. And I'm so, so grateful for that because like the whole community was able to help us out. So I know that that impacted the community again, because it's Lincoln is such a small town, and when you had something like that happen, like everybody's yeah. like, whoa, you know. So that what was. What did you? What do you think you learned from that experience? Um, well, a lot. From that, yeah. So tell us about that. If you, it's, I mean, I can only. I mean, I can't even imagine mm -hmm. going through that. Yeah. Like that's some crazy shit. Yeah, definitely. And just the roller coaster of emotions. You probably had anger. You had, you were sad. You were, you know, there's a lot. So how did you get through that? Being so, 15 years old. I, honestly, I don't know. Like, I was so young. So I, I don't remember. Were you really close remember. to him? I, I, well, yeah. Yeah. We were definitely more closer to my dad than we were to my mom. And I was the last person to see him. You know, like, my mom didn't see him that day. My sister didn't see him. I, I saw him before he left. So, like, that image, that him leaving the door always replays in my head all the time. Every time I hear, I remember, like, for the longest, every time I would hear sirens, like, I would just, like, want to cover my ears. You know, just traumatized. Um, and you know, I, I really don't remember. Maybe I just didn't understand at the, at that time, but I mean, now, now that I'm like, you know, years past, I kind of do understand like, you know, like, and everything just plays out. Like it's, it's so crazy how things happen. Like things always happen for a reason. And, you know, we're big on faith and I'm like, if, you know, if that wouldn't have happened, like I would never have met my soulmate, which, you know, I've been with him for like 12, oh, this year's gonna be 12 years. Yeah. And my sister with her husband and my brother doing his thing. Like we would, like, I always think of it that way. You know, yeah, think of it true. like things happen for a reason. Yeah, it's like maybe he needed to pass for us to find our life, you know, live our life and find like our soulmates and create our families and stuff like that. So yeah, it's, I always see it that way. And definitely like life lesson, like open your eyes, like, enjoy and cherish every single moment you have with everybody because like I said one day they're here the next day they're not here yeah. so that's probably like the biggest things that I take from that for sure yeah heck yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then from there you move to where'd you move to so it's Vicelia? yeah Orosi? It's, yeah Orosi. it's a small that's like non-existent almost it's kind of like in between Bakersfield and Fresno so we kind of live there um so we, somewhere in there, there. Just somewhere in, between, in there they live there <laughs> somewhere in the middle <laughs> So you moved Somewhere there, the and what was it like going from Lincoln to that? What was that like? Well, that had to be a battle too, especially oh, being yeah. like in the middle of high school. Yes, definitely. So like I know, um, like I said, we packed our clothes and we just left without not even having anywhere to live, without nothing. So I know we stayed with my aunt for like a month while we found a place for ourselves, um, get enrolled in school, um, and all that good stuff. So it was a huge change, you know, but I mean, I feel like since I always moved schools when I was little, I was kind of like already used, used to, to it, it, used to it. But it's definitely so different over there than it is here. Like, you know, this is city, this is city life. Over there is such a small town, farmer town. Um, you know, all, of, all, that, all that's around us is like citrus trees and stuff like that. So it's so different than living here. Um, but 
I know like right away after we moved, um, before I even started school, my cousin was like, hey, like come to the school, come get to know the school as a visitor, it's homecoming day. So I was like, okay, well, I mean, I'm gonna go to school there, so I'm gonna go check it out. And that's the day that I actually met my husband. Really? That same, three days after I moved there. That's the day that I, not met him, but I kind of seen him. So. Kind of um, seen him, so you didn't really look? No, no, I mean, because <laughs> I was not interested in like, in freaking being with a guy at the moment, of course. So yeah. I remember seeing him out in the field and he kept looking at me and I noticed that he kept looking at me. Um, so, you know, I was just there not even paying attention. So I went that day, and then days later, my cousin was like, hey, remember that guy that was right there looking at you? Like, he wants your number. And I kept saying no for the longest. Like, I'm not interested in nobody right now. Like, no. <laughs> so I kept saying no for the longest. And um, my cousin was like, she kept saying, like, hey, he keeps bugging me. Like, can you just, like, give him a chance? I'm like, okay, fine. Just give him my number. And it, that's where it started. 12 years later, we're here married with two kids. So buying. you were with them for the rest of the high school yeah, years? Yeah, the rest of the high school year, the rest of the time and I was in there. That's cool. Yeah. That, yeah. So it is kind of like, it was like, literally, as soon as you moved, it was like, literally, that was your destiny. That was my destiny. Exactly. That's why I always think so of it that way. So how many years until you had your first kid? How, how, how many years together? Or like, how old were you? We were, I was 18. So we were together already for three years, I think. Was it three years? So I met years. him in 2010. We had Sophia in 2014. Okay. So, yeah. That's yeah. cool. And yeah. then from there, um, what was next for you? You, How was it being a mom? And were you at home or were you working? So um, after high school, you know, I was with him the whole time. So I didn't have my papers at the moment. So, you know, when you're in high school, your senior year, like, you, oh, you need money for this. You need money for graduation, for prom, for stuff like that. Um, you know, my mom didn't, my mom didn't, my mom's always struggled, especially raising, after being on her own, raising four kids, like, it was such a struggle for her, so, um, you know, thankfully, my in-laws, they actually have a taco truck, so they told me, like, hey, you want to help us out on the weekends and earn your little money just for your, you know, for your school stuff, and I was like, heck yeah, so that's kind of, like, my first job at the taco mm -hmm. truck, and, you know, I was there for, like, six years, but, you know, it was fun. It was fun just taking orders, you know, customers, making the food. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of what I did th all throughout high school. And once I graduated, I did move out. So I moved in with him um, and continued to work at the taco truck. So I worked there. And um, I think after I had Sophia, so in 2014, um, I kind of started getting into makeup. So, you know, I started getting into makeup and I loved it. I loved doing it. So um, by the following year, I was like, hey, you know, like maybe I should... I should do this like as I should freelance because you know it's an extra income on top of what I already make it at the taco truck. And of course, again, I didn't have a social, I didn't have any work and nothing, so I couldn't go out and look for a job. You know, I couldn't go work anywhere. So I was like, okay, this is perfect. You know, I love doing makeup and it can help me with my income. So I started doing makeup freelancing as well. So I was so doing that for the longest. Before you move on, explain what this. You don't have a social because some people may not know what that is. I talk about it all the time, <laughs> but they need to hear it from you. So I was. I was, I mean, I came to the United States illegally. I was undocumented my whole life until actually, until I was 22. Um, so I didn't have a social security number. I couldn't work anywhere. Like I didn't, I don't think DACA was around at that time. Um, so I really had no options, you know? So, mm -hmm. you know, so that's why I'm always thankful for my in-laws for <laughs> giving me that chance. Yeah, and yeah. it's and it's a big, just a quick little thing. I, I just thought I'd point this out. When you don't have a social, you're very limited on where you can mm -hmm. work. And if you do find a job, it's not usually the best job. <laughs> yeah. And you kind of get taken advantage of. So that's where she's kind of saying that she was having a hard time finding a place where she can get hired and, yeah. and probably be flexible with everything that she was going on. So you got blessed with the taco truck, you're working there, <laughs> and then you find this freelance thing. Yeah. How did the passion for, for makeup begin? Did it begin because you just got good at it with yourself? Or did, did you just see something that has sparked your interest? How did that come up for you so uh honestly I don't know I feel like I this is when when the makeup industry started I mean right now it's so big but this was when it had barely starting you know starting to get yeah. popular so I you know I would watch videos I would watch YouTube and that kind of like you know what made me interested in doing makeup and uh, I know a lot of people are like how did like did you go to school I'm like no I just learned watching YouTube like I literally just learned watching YouTube how to do my makeup so I practiced and practiced you know like I was I'm working at the taco truck only Friday Saturday Sunday so I had Every day of the week available, I was bored, so I was like, "Let me just go yeah. into makeup." And YouTube University is teaching everybody. A oh lot my of gosh, YouTube University! It is. Yes, my guy Scotty yes. here, the producer, he he learned he 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 learned all his video stuff. Oh, he wow. said ninety eighty percent of the things he learned was through YouTube University. Yeah, he got a bachelor's so in YouTube University. <laughs> YouTube 
For real. Really. Hey, it's, it's huge, man. You can look up anything and learn if you really want to learn. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Um, and I always see it, see it that way because people are like, how do you, how are you so good at this? How are you so good at that? Like, how did you get good at this? How do you find your workouts? How did you do your makeup? How did you, it's learning. Like everything is out there. I mean, YouTube, like for example, is the perfect example that you can do anything that you want to set your mind to. How I learned, how, to make, how did I learn to make a braid on YouTube? Watching it on YouTube and practicing. Everything, mm. watching on YouTube and practicing. And the That's more you I do learned. it, you get better with yes, it. Yes, the more you do it, the more you get better at it. Yep. Exactly. So you started freelancing in, you said like 2013, 14? 2016. 16. Yeah. So mm-hmm. since 2016 to now, you still do it? Yes. yes. And how much has your business changed? change or grown from 2016 to now? Oh, Six a lot. Years. Definitely. So what's the biggest difference? Um, well, I mean, just being known, you know, like once you start, like not everybody like knows you or, and recommendations too. I feel like once you do makeup, recommendations is huge. Like they'd be like, oh, you know, this person did my makeup or who do you know is good at makeup or who do you know? Mm-hmm. So definitely like word of mouth and, you know, social media, of course, I worked hard to grow my social media to get myself out there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely. That was one I thing love. I wanted to talk to you because yes. you do amazing with your social media. Thank you. That's like a full-time job. Oh like, yeah. I get to it. I'm like, man, I'm tired of this <laughs> <laughs> I for real. I, I like I go days without posting because I'm t- the only reason why I post is for for like my social media stuff yeah. that I need for work. Yeah. But if I didn't work, I'm like, man, I'm tired of this shit. I hate this <laughs> damn thing. What's the secret? How do you do it? How do you make it look easy? So just be passionate about it, honestly. Once if you love to do it, it, it comes easy. Of course, if there's work and I now have my help from my husband, my poor husband, like when he's taking my pictures, he's like, Are we done? I'm like, no, there's more. Do you like this one? No. So yeah, he, told he contributes me. to a lot. He's like, I'm the I'm the video guy, he said. <laughs> <laughs> the video guy. So yeah, shout out to him because you know he, he helps me out a lot. And of course I have my tripod, but it's just better when he's there with me and Stuff so like how that. much do you post a day, do you think? Um, a lot. <laughs> Give I me love. a number. So like. on my stories, I'm posting. I mean, I share a lot about my life on my social media. Um, so on my stories, I'm just posting like throughout everything that I'm doing throughout the day. Um, on my feed, it's either like my outfit videos or my reels or my makeup tutorials. Like everything about me, I incorporate into my page. But I definitely love taking pictures and, you know, outfits and stuff like that. Yeah. Why do you think, it's funny, man. So the episode that I that I'm releasing next week, mm-hmm. I talk about that, literally that, being yourself and and putting yourself out there and just be you. Do you think that played a big difference in getting such a following because people are connecting to your lifestyle, to you and who you are as a person? Or do you think that it, you would be big regardless if you didn't share nothing from your personal life? Oh my gosh, this one, yes. it's That is seriously the key. Yep. The key is being yourself because... Um, I mean, people, I feel like now social media has changed so much because of TikTok, you know, on TikTok, everybody shows like their funny moments, their mess up moments, like their real life. So I feel like people like drew more towards into real life than perfect pictures, perfect Instagram posts, perfect Instagram story. Yeah. They drew more into like, I want to see your real life. I want to see like the behind the scenes. So social media definitely has changed because I remember when Instagram was just pictures, you know, yeah. pictures, videos. But now we have so many different things and people want to see like what you're doing in life. And honestly, like I always even tell this to my team, my business team, like that's that's literally what got me to my following. Being myself, you know, um, being myself, sharing what I love. And sharing about you, sharing your story, because a lot of people, that's how people relate to you. And when yep. people relate to you, they can trust you. I, 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 I can't even say, like, how much amazing people I have met on social media. Like, so much amazing people just yeah. on social media. And why? For being yourself. For being yourself. Because people relate to you. People like your vibe or whatever the case is. Being real and being yourself. Yep. And, of course, like, and it's funny, I have to say this, because I was so antisocial, like, super antisocial like in, in high school I was the quietest one in the group like I wouldn't say a word I was scared I was so antisocial and it's crazy to think that what I'm doing now like putting myself out there it's so crazy but you know it's it's all personal growth but it, it's crazy people would always tell me like you're so good at this you're so good at social media you're so good at talking to people I was never good at this I was so 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 scared like first of all I'd never I didn't want to do a network marketing business because I was terrified to put myself out there on social yeah. media I remember when I started the business, I may be like five, six months in, I wouldn't show my kids. I wouldn't show my husband. I wouldn't show any of them because I was so scared, you know, so scared of what, putting myself, my life out there. I got a story for you about that, but (laughs) I'll tell you in a little bit because I want you to tell us about your business. So tell me what your business is and tell us what it is. So you still doing the freelancing and then this other period of business grew in 
right? Yeah, yeah. Tell me what it is and how you got into it. So uh, I do Monet. I'm sure some of you guys have heard about it. It's about it's basically just a hair care, skin care, wellness line, um, vegan, anti-aging products, um, naturally based. They are amazing. So I've been doing this for uh, for two years and a half. The September is going to be three years. And how I came about this business. So, you know, once... Once I got my papers, I was able to get my papers, my uh, residence through my husband. So uh, this was when I was 22. This was in 2017, I believe. So after that, you know, we were living with my in-laws still and like, okay, you know, now we got to, now we have like two kids. Now we have to go find our house. So um, meanwhile, we were still living with my in-laws. I was just doing the makeup and taco truck, you know. So once I was able to get my residency and work, I was just, you know, looking local in the gas station. So I would work at the gas station as a cashier, just this little job here and there. Somewhere where I had flexibility. So um, once we were able to get our house in 2019, um, you know, I had stopped working because my son, I had my son. So once we got our house in 2019, my husband was like, hey, you know, like we have a house, like now you have to go out and look for like a, a full-time job because the bills, like nobody tells you how, like what comes with buying a house. You know, you, you don't just have the mortgage, you have like the electricity, the house needs decorations, furniture. It's so, so, so expensive. So, um, you know, I started looking around for jobs and it was hard. It was tough not having a college degree, not having any experience. It was really, really hard to find a job. So thankfully, um, I got into this insurance company. So I was, you know, working into insurance. And that's the same time that I joined Money. So, um, you know, I worked into insurance and, um, you know, it was good just doing car, car insurance. And, but being into like a full-time, full-time job, having two kids, it was like, like, how do people do this? Like, how do people work five to six days a week for eight, nine hours and not see their family until 5, 6 p.m.? So being exposed, being in the corporate world, kind of like, you know, and that was my dream. When I was little, I was like, oh, you know, office job, I made it. I have a good paying office job. You know, I, I that, that was my dream job. And being there, it was like, okay, I, I don't want this. <laughs> you know, I don't want this for the rest of my life, especially having kids, you know, having kids and um, having a house to maintain. Like, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. So um, I started Monet, and uh, I actually tried out the products first before I even got into the business. Um, I was more interested in the products. So I tried the products. I love them. And then my cousin, who was the one who introduced this to me, she was like, hey, you wanted to do the business? And I'm like, uh, no, because I was so scared, you know, so scared of putting myself out there. I was like, absolutely not. Like, you're crazy. So what do you got to do for the business? Like, so, when you join the business, what is the business like? So we basically just share the products. We share mm. the products. We help those who are interested in trying the products, you know, our, our customers. Um, so it's kind of like, not like... Uh, I want to say like other network marketing companies, but you know, that's what we do. So we share the products and we just help our customers get their products and help them find the products that are best for them and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. we just, when we grow a team, we kind of teach our team to do the same thing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that's basically what we do. So, um, you know, like I said, I, I didn't want to join the business because of that, putting myself out there and, you know, talking to people. So you've been doing it for <laughs> three years now? Uh, yeah, almost three years. Yeah. And what's that what's the biggest change you've seen in the three years for yourself oh wow like it has been humongous like humongous change in myself um so when I had when I had my corporate job and I worked the business I started the business because honestly I needed the income like I you know living um new house new car it was hard to keep up with the bills so I joined just because I needed the extra income I was like okay I don't want to do this but I I need the income you know we need the income and it was nice because little by little we started to have more money like for for more things, more flexibility. So I was like, okay, like this is pretty cool. Like, you know, I'm making money from my phone. Yeah. You know, I'm making a whole in extra income without having to go to a second job, without having to, um, you know, do, be not leave the house. So I was like, this is amazing. Perfect. You know, this is amazing. Yeah. And then, um, so <clears throat> once I started to be more into the business, I started to see people like, hey, you know, I, they're quitting their full time jobs to do this full time. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I want that too. You know, I want to be home with my kids and make an income at the same time. Because I always tell people, like, for us moms, it's hard because we have to choose, okay, um, you're either going to go work at a full-time job and pay for daycare and leave your kids to someone else to raise them, 
but you contribute to the income. Or you stay home with the kids, raise them yourself, but you contribute nothing to the income. So um, it's a hard decision that we have to make. And I'm like, why not have best of both worlds? So I kind of, once knowing and seeing what, you know, that what the business can do, the opportunity can do, I was like, okay, I want to do this full time. Like, I really, really want to stay home with my kids. And especially how I was raised, you know, my parents were never home. I would have to watch my siblings. I was like, I don't want that for my kids. You know, I really mm. don't want that for my kids. I want to, them to have me around whenever they need me and to be there when they're sick or whatever the case is. So that kind of pushed me as well, like just me True. growing up. Yeah. It, it made an impact. Your childhood yes. made an impact. Yes, definitely. So I was like, I don't want that life from my kids where yeah. their parents are always gone working. How big is your, your team now? Um, it's not, it's not much. It's not really big. I probably say I want to have 20 girls. So I'm, you know, my team, I, it's just starting up, you know, just starting up. No, it was good. I remember I did that thing with you. Oh, yeah. There was a lot you, of girls on there. Yeah, when you hosted your call for us. So yeah, that it was, was amazing. There was a lot of girls. <laughs> yeah. So let me share this story with you. I don't think I've ever told you this. So when I was 19 years old, I did uh, Primerica. I don't know if you ever heard of Primerica. Mm -hmm. Yes. You heard of Primerica? Yeah. And they're like a finance network that they do insurance and things like that. And the reason how I got into Primerica is the girl I was dating at the time, mm -hmm. her family was in Prime America, like huge. And I had no social and I couldn't, I couldn't get any other job. And this was during the time where I was trying to find something besides boxing. And mm -hmm. so I, I started doing Prime America. And to be honest, me as a 19 year old, I didn't really, I didn't really like it. I just did it because I had no choice <laughs> and I was using, my girlfriend's social. Oh, okay, okay. So it wasn't under my name. It was everything under her name, and I was working under her name. Does that make sense? Yes. And I have to share the story. I went to Lincoln, and I uh, presented my whole thing to Elias. Oh, uh-huh, yeah. And mm -hmm. when I was there, this is where it's very important that you believe in your product and you believe in everything about your business. Mm -hmm. You have to really, and it's, it's like that with everything. You got to believe in your business. Yeah. I did not believe in Primerica at all. <laughs> but it's not because it was in Primerica, it's just I wasn't confident enough mm. with that and I didn't like it. So yeah. it was really nothing wrong with Primerica, it was mostly me. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. And when I was there, we did everything, da da da, and left nothing from it, mm -hmm. right? And I was gonna go and do it with your dad. Mm -hmm. And um, I was gonna call him and it's, it's, in matter of fact, Elias told me, you should go hit up Antonio. You should mm -hmm. go hit up Antonio. Da, da, da. And I was like, I was like, but I wasn't confident enough to, to present it to him. And yeah. I didn't do it. No joke, like eight, nine months later is when the accident happened. Yes. And I feel so bad to this day. I feel bad because I'm like, why did, what would have happened if I would have went and he would have got life insurance? Because that's mm -hmm. what we did. We yeah. sold life insurance. Yeah. So what he would have got life insurance it would have been a big difference. And it yeah. just killed me inside that. I didn't have the confidence enough to go talk to him because I didn't believe in myself enough. Oh, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? I get you. And, yeah. and and things like that are very, like, <clears throat> is important. Like I said, with, with like, what you're doing now, with anything, you got to believe in your product. And most of all, you got to believe in you. Yeah. Yourself. No, and that's that's huge. Yeah. So, I don't know. I just had to tell you <laughs> that. Uh, and, and then especially because with what you do now is, is similar. How yeah. do you deal with people that talk negative about your business? So How do you deal with like <clears throat> negative comments? It goes back to that. It goes back to 100% believing in your business and your products. Mm -hmm. So if you don't believe 100%, when someone says something negative, they're going to be like, oh, maybe they're right. Maybe these products don't work or maybe these products do this or that. So you have to be 100% confident and knowledgeable. So going and learning your shit, first of all, mm -hmm. knowing that it, like your business, your products, 100% and believing 100% in your business and your products. Because when you have those people who talk negative, what they're going to do is going to bring you down. But if you are 100% confident in your business and your products, whatever people say are not going to even phase you. Yeah. So, yeah, believing your products 100%. That's good. That's yes. good. Well, how is this? Is this difficult with being a... There's certain things that you probably have to do or events. How do you... Is it difficult to manage that with your husband and um, being a wife? And be like, hey, I got this or that. Is that difficult? You know what? So I want to go rewind a bit when I was working my full-time job and doing mm -hmm. this on the side. 
So, uh, you know, I would work my full-time job, get out of work at like five, six o'clock. Um, I would come home, cook, eat with them. And then the rest of the night, I would work on my business. Mm-hmm. That, that was my routine for five to six days. That was probably harder than yes. this. Yes. So it was hard on them for sure. Like my kids and my husband would be like, oh, you know, like we're, we, we feel neglected. Like you're not spending time with us. You're just too focused on your business. And it, just, it did cause a lot of, lot of, lot of conflict between us. Um, but, you know, you, it, you have to see the vision. Yeah. You have, I knew that this business was going to do big things for me. So I had that vision um, that if I kept going, I was going to get to where I wanted to be. So I was like, trust me, just, I know, you know, I know I'm neglecting you guys right now, but I'm working full time and I'm working this on the side. And um, this is the only time that I can work my business. So just bear with me and trust me. And then, um, you know, I was like, like that for the longest. Like I wouldn't even have dinner sometimes. I would just come home from work, cook, clean work the rest of the night every single day because I was serious about my goals again you have to have that vision you have to have that vision and you have to know what you're are going for um so that did create a lot of conflict and um come back to what was it November of 2021 I actually uh switched jobs so I switched jobs to my insurance into a staffing agency doing sales so um I did that for only three months when I was like, I quit. I hate the corporate world. I do not want to be here no more. And I quit. <laughs> so I quit my job in, was it February of 2021, actually? Um, so I quit my job and, um, you know, just the stress of being at a nine to five job. Like, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm stressing myself over someone else's business when I have my own, when I have this golden ticket of my own business, you know? So that job really just mentally like drained me like it's so 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 bad that I was like I do not want to do this no more like I do not want a corporate job no more so I quit I quit and you know my business at that time wasn't so like big but being with that being known like I was like okay my business is not where I want it to be I'm gonna go hard so I have all this extra time now I'm not at my job anymore I'm going to go hard. So that's when I started the social media. So I started doing the reels and I started putting myself out there. Like, even if I didn't want to record myself, I'm like, I don't want to record myself working now. Like, you know, I started doing all that. And that's kind of where I started growing my following just by doing all the reels, all the videos. Um, That's where I started growing the following and with that, growing my business as well. And a lot of people have that misconception like, oh, you know, you just you have a successful business because you have a large following no that's not the case like Mm. i can have 50k followers 100k followers if i'm not showing up for my business like i should be then now that makes it to have those followers yeah it's pointless so it's definitely and plus you worked for them like you earned them you it's not like you just bought them yeah like (laughs) you it's not it's it's hard to do that it's not easy yeah what about mona do you love like why do you love the company like what about it not the product, um, just yeah. the company. Just um, everything that it offers, honestly. Like, <clears throat> I met our CEOs. They are amazing. You know, their their story is amazing as well. They're from Venezuela. So their story is amazing. They're very humble. They're they're so caring. And just all the perks that we have, you know, like, it, that com- when you compare that to a 9-to-5 job, it's like, yeah. wow, you know? Not the same. Um, I know we have won three free trips already. We went to Dominican Republic back in October. I took my husband. Um, I've won uh, the previous year Dominican Republic as well, but we couldn't go because of the because of COVID. So they just compensated us for that. And Vegas, I did win a free trip to Vegas um, this year as well. We were able to go because of my daughter. But you know, free trips. You know, a nine to five will never give you a free trip. Yeah. You know, so they're free trips. And then um, of course, like the compensation plan and just the most important part, being able to make money wherever from your phone. That to me, like, was the biggest thing for me. And you don't leave your kids. Yeah, you don't leave your kids. Exactly. So that to me was the biggest thing. And that's what kind of drove me to, to, do it. to do it. Just, you know, being able to travel and go anywhere without having to worry about, oh, I have to call in. Oh, I have to do this. And now the situation with my daughter, it's like, I'm so thankful. Thankful that I have this business and thankful that I worked hard to get where I'm at today. Because, you know, you see these kids. There. Yeah, you see these kids in the hospital alone because their both parents have to go to work. That is sad. So that is so sad, and I'm so, so thankful for that, yeah. So tell us about your daughter. What happened? So um, she recently, my daughter Sophia, she's seven. She recently got Mm -hmm. diagnosed with Ewing sarcoma, which is like a type of bone cancer. Um, So we barely started this. How did you, how did did that come about? Like, how did you find out something was wrong? So this is the crazy thing. So in February, the beginning of February of this year, um, her foot just woke up swollen. 
just her right foot. It just woke up swollen one day. And we were like, uh, what happened? Like, did you hurt it? Like, we remember if she were to twist her ankle or something, it would have like, up, you know, obviously known. But she was like, no, I don't remember hurting myself. Like maybe I ran in school or stepped wrong or whatever the case is. So her ankle, her foot was swollen. So um, I took her in to get x-rays and the doctor was like, x-rays are normal. Like they're fine. So I'm like, uh, like, how are they normal when her foot is swollen? Yeah, that's not normal. <laughs> yeah, so um, I, we tried everything. Like we tried the ice, we tried all the Mexican remedies on the list to bring her swollenness down. Um, and it would not go down no matter what we did. So we tried everything and it wouldn't go down. So I'm like, okay, if she doesn't have a broken bone, anything, like why is it swollen? So I went back again to the doctor and I'm like, hey, like it's still swollen. Like what's going on? So they did a second x-ray and they kind of like seen like a little shadow on the bone. It was barely visible. So the doctor was like, okay, you know, we see something here. We're going to refer you over to a orth orthopedic. I think that's what the foot doctor, orthopedic. And I was like, okay, well, I guess we wait now. So um, her foot was still swelling. Like she couldn't walk at some point. She was in pain. And I was like, I am not going to wait. Sit here and wait for the orthopedic to call me and be like, oh, come in to see you. And you know, that's how it is with re referrals. Like it, it takes a while. It takes a month, two months for your referrals, depending on the insurance you have. So I'm like, I'm not going to wait two, one, two months for my daughter to get seen. Yeah. So I just had this feeling like in me that was like, take her to the ER, take her to the children's hospital emergency room. Um, so we took her and then, um, the doctor they took another x-ray and they seen that little shadow got worse. Like it, it got like more around the bone. So he was like, the ER doctor was concerned, like maybe is it an infection? Is it this? But her blood work came back normal. So it couldn't be an infection. So he was like, I'm just going to send you guys home with antibiotics just in case it is an infection and then come back after two weeks. So we went back after two weeks and then they did the follow-up x-ray yeah they did the follow-up x-ray and they were like okay yeah this thing that she has definitely keeps growing so it got worse than getting better so that's when everything started and we did a biopsy they did a biopsy um to take a, a sample of it and that's when we found out it was ewing's ewing sarcoma so you know that alone is like a whole different that alone is just hard but again we we have so much faith and i have such a positive mindset that I thank God for my business for giving me that I, I grew so much as a person. So I have this strong mentality and faith again, that alone is getting us through this, to be yeah. honest, and us together as a family. So um, I know so many people are like, how are you positive? How are you so positive? Yeah, how are yeah, you? And that's I'm like, crazy. it's just faith. I have faith that everything's going to be okay. And I have a strong mindset where I'm not how just going to sit here. Honestly, she is holding up as, as how we are. As how we are. If she sees she her mom and dad, you. yes. If she sees her mom and dad are strong, going through life, they're putting, they're laughing, they're smiling. That's exactly how she's gonna be. So it yeah. would be different. Like if it were to be there, sad, depressed, you know, worried about the situation, what's she gonna do? She's gonna do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely. That's a good. That's a good tip right there. Yes. Yes. Exactly. So you've been battling with this now for how many months? So this is like our third. Third month, I think. Third month? Yeah. So and you said she's in treatment right now? Yeah, she's in treatment. And yeah. what's what the what's the process for everything? So um, you know what? Like actually going into this, there's not a lot of research for childhood cancer. Like there's really not they give the same thing as they give adults. For they give the same thing for all types of cancer. So um there's not a lot of research. So they're basically just doing like your regular chemo, chemotherapy, and then um four to six weeks from now, they're gonna go back and do scans again to see if that tumor has shrunk and then do surgery to remove it. So that's kind of like the process of what's no. going to happen. Damn, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. So out of all these things that you keep going through, all these battles, which one do you think is the toughest battle for you that you've overcame or lived oh, through man. this far? <laughs> I don't know. That one's a, That's a hard one. That's a hard decision because they're definitely all hard. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. Probably this one for sure. Yeah. This one is definitely the hardest. But again, I am so thankful that I have that mindset and that faith that I have because yeah. without that, I don't that's know. That's huge. Yeah. You got the right huge. mindset for sure. Yeah. Um, let's change it up a bit. I'm going to uh, change up and let's go into like, what do you like to do on your free time? Like no work, just let's say you have a kid, a date just alone, maybe with your husband. What do you got? What do you like to do? So we love to travel. <laughs> we love to go out places. So like, 
Um, I know last year we went out to New York, to Atlanta. We went to the Braves Stadium. Yeah, um, I saw you guys are Atlanta Braves fans. Oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, and Why? That's <laughs> random. <laughs> we, you know what? We always get asked that. Like, you're like, all the people, all the time, they're like, you're from California. Like, why are you a Braves fan? Like, what's wrong with you guys? <laughs> so I, and my husband usually tells me, tell them, like, that's how he grew up. You know, his brother was a Braves fan, so that he just kind of followed into the step, oh, okay. footsteps. So, yeah, well, you know, and his wife, you know, following yeah, into the footsteps. Family thing. The family thing. So, so how was that? How was New York and how was Atlanta? It was so awesome. You were it gone was for awesome. a few days? Yeah, we were gone for a few days. And you know what? Like, we're so thankful that we we're able to give our kids that experience because yeah. I, for sure, we definitely never traveled anywhere, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's nice. It's nice to give those your kids those experiences that you, you've you never had, honestly. That is yes. That's tight. Yes. I still haven't been to New York. <laughs> I've been close. Yeah. But I haven't been to New York. It's, That's it's, tight. It's nice. Um, what's your favorite restaurant? Or that you go out to eat. It doesn't have to it could be anywhere. It doesn't even have to be here. We may not even know about it. What's what's the spot? Maybe I'll what go check it out. Paris? <laughs> if it's like a Friday night, you got a hot date with the hubby, where are you going? Um, let's see, let's see. So my favorite, my current favorite, it's a local restaurant in Visalia. It's called Bistro de Bufa, and it's basically Italian food. If yeah. you guys know me, you guys know I freaking love pasta. Me I too. love pasta so much. And it has to do with my dad, because my dad would always come home with restaurant meals so we would eat and it just screwed you know a lot of people would tell me that i look like your dad yeah a lot of people would always tell me yes i have that similarity isn't it crazy how my son looks like my brother yeah a lot they look like twins (laughs) for sure so crazy um what do you think we should name this episode oh my gosh that's a good question i don't know come up with a name i'm so bad at coming up with names no nothing (laughs) Um, so what tip would you give a mother listening to this right now that's struggling with finding that passion and motivation? Do you, have, you give them any certain tip, anything you would give them? Uh, yeah. I mean, for us moms, like I said, uh, we have it a little tougher because, you know, we have our kids to put up front. But honestly, like the best thing I've learned throughout, you know, these past three years is self-care. Self-care, putting yourself first because honestly that makes the biggest difference and I know a lot of people see it like oh you're being selfish like oh you're going out you're going out with your kids you're without your kids you're being selfish guys like people don't realize that in order for the kids to have the best mom you have to be your best self yep and not only that uh you were for me like I was Erin Dira before I was a mom so I can't forget about Erin Dira you know like I have to take care of her and nourish her just you know before I'm in that mom title you know so that is true. Self care. Like yeah, like self care is huge. Like that. That really is the key for you to becoming the best mom, to becoming mm. the best wife, to becoming the best person in general, is yeah. becoming your best self. So, I find that a lot with myself. That when I'm in the gym a lot, or I'm like coaching and I'm gone every weekend, I start like feeling like, damn, I never, I didn't give back to myself. So it's like you can't give out of a empty cup. Oh, yeah. You got to mm-hmm. fill your cup. So that's a great tip. Yes. I like that a lot. So this episode is going to be released on a Monday. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there anything you like to do to start off your week in the right way? Any weekly rituals, maybe praying, meditating, working out or anything like that? Yes. Yeah, so on Mondays, I actually, of course, start workout. You can't ever skip a workout on a Monday. <laughs> and then uh, mindset. So mindset, working on mindset for sure. Uh, Monday mindset, that's what I like to see it as. Um, starting off the week with a good mentality. Um, so that's either like reading a book or I actually do 6 a.m. calls for my team, Zoom calls. On Monday? So on Every day. So oh, Monday through day. Friday. Monday through Friday. So I started this back in October, I think, or mid-September. That's good. So every day I have my team, you know, those of you who those of who want to join on, I do 6 a.m. So what like, do you guys do there? Motivation. Motivation, mindset, like business, what? everything. Explain. I'm curious. So <laughs> I'm in that meeting right now with you. And I, and I want to be with the Monat team with that meeting. So, what are you going to tell me? So on Mondays, so Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we do motivation. So we uh, do mindset mindset so either uh we watch usually watch a video and then we reflect on it so monday wednesday and friday are mindset and then tuesday and thursday is training so anything about the business like we'll do training and stuff like that and honestly it really feels nice to start off like that especially with mindset like you know i go to the gym that's kind of my routine i go to the gym and then come home do my 6 a.m call with my team and work on mindset together and then just start my day from there. So it, it it's really, it feels so good to start off that way. Start yeah, yeah. off positive and start off doing something for yourself. That's so, badass. Yeah. No, yeah. 
<laughs> I like that. 6 a.m. too, and for the fact that everybody be like, you know what, let's do it, that's good, because 6 a.m. could be early for people. Yes. So that, no, yeah. that's, that's good. No. Um, what do you think are the takeaways from this episode? Um, I mean... What can people take away from this episode, do you think? What is probably one thing that if anyone that listened to this episode, what is that one thing you would say, do not, not listen to this. This is probably my best advice out of this whole episode. What do you think it was? Um, so probably just like despite what life throws at you, despite where you come from, despite anything, you can achieve anything that you put your mind to. Anything that you put your mind to. It doesn't matter where you're from. If you were born in Mexico, undocumented, um, if you don't know how to do this, do that. You guys can do anything that your heart desires if you put your mind to it because like I said, I started from zero. I started not knowing anything. I didn't go to college. I, nothing. I, I had every excuse in the book, but I chose not to choose my excuses. I chose to go after my dreams. Yeah. And, you know, just don't stop. Don't stop. No matter when life throws these curves balls at you, like, oh, your daughter has yeah. cancer. You're, you're, you're going through this, this and that. No, keep going. That's just God's te way of testing you. Like, okay. And you are the living proof of that. <laughs> For real. Oh, For real. You... you you are inspiring. I mean, for you to come here and be this happy and while you're literally living through hell with that, like, that's amazing. And you're amazing for that. Uh, and then to have your husband to sit here and just that supportive, that right there is sweet, you know, and oh, yeah. that's a team that you, not many people have that. And the fact that you do have that is, that's bigger than anything. It's, that's yeah, amazing. So it's a blessing. I admire you for that. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for being on. Thank you for having me on. And, um, Man, just to making the drop, I feel bad. She said her husband got a speeding <laughs> ticket getting here. Um, no, it's so fine. How can people stay in touch with you? Um, so my social media is probably like the best way. Uh, my Instagram page, um, it's uh, Erin Dira Aransisu. We're probably like have it spelled out somewhere or something. But yeah, yeah, I'll get it. It'll be on the on the bio. Yeah, on the bio. Uh, but yeah, you guys can follow me on there. And like I said, I share a lot about our life, like everything that we go through. Um, and stuff like that. So if you guys want to follow on, just just follow me. Cool. Sounds <laughs> yeah. good. Well, thank you guys for listening. I uh, hope you guys connect with us. I hope you gain a lot from this. I definitely did. I'm going to have my wife listen to this. <laughs> like your child's working at home. You over there at home, I'm playing. <laughs> no, but uh, no, amazing story. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. Thank you guys for listening. I will see you guys next week. Uh, uh, back on, I think, who am I having? No, I'm going to be a solo next week. Um, Thank you guys for listening. I hope you guys like, subscribe, leave a review, follow, and we are out.